Go sit down with Mom. Go. Come on. The other day I was listening to a guy. He brought something up that I had never, ever thought about. It's another kind of Christmas message, but not. It's about a great gift. We're going to be reading out of St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. And I'm going to be reading three verses, 49, 50, and 51. Luke 22, starting with verse 49. I'll let Nikki get caught up. Everybody there? Now if everybody's ready, Luke, 40, Luke 22 49. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite them with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye this thus far. And he touched his ear and he healed him. You may be seated. I got to thinking about this where Jesus put the man's ear back on. See, old Simon Peter was the man to cut the ear off. Well, Simon Peter cut the man's ear off when they come to arrest Jesus. Most people don't realize what Simon Peter had done was a crucifiable offense. It's something that Simon Peter could have been put to death for. He could have been taken out on an old rugged cross, and he could have died for what he had done at this point. But who stepped in? Amen. Amen. That's right. Jesus stepped in and he, Jesus reached down and he grabbed that ear and he put it back on that man. Amen. Amen. And he said, you don't have to go to the, you don't have to go face judgment today. Amen. I'm going to go face it for you today. I'm going to go up there on the old Calvary. I'm going to take your sin away today. I'm going to cast that sin where you, old Simon Peter, had cut that ear off. He said, Simon Peter, I'm taking that away from you. Amen. He said, I'm casting that as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Yes. You're not going to have to answer for this. I'm going to go down and I'm going to take the punishment. I'm going to take the beating. Amen. I'm going to take the deal and go up on an old rugged cross for what you have done and for the sins you have committed. Oh, Jesus was willing whenever... Simon Peter had committed the sin. He was willing to forgive him right there. Amen. I tell you what, I never looked at it that way until I listened to a little bit of that guy talking about it. But at that point, Jesus was saying, I'm going to the cross for you. Amen. He was going to the cross for old Simon Peter for the sin he committed. He goes to the cross for each and every one of us tonight. Amen. I tell you, for the sins you've committed in your life Amen. and the things you've done wrong, Jesus is willing to step in and he'll cast them sins away Amen. where there was no evidence. You stop and think Amen. about it. That old boy could have went back and went up before them, before old Caesar and all these people and said, look, Simon Peter, come here. Off. There was no evidence. Yeah. I tell you what, someday we're all going to stand trial before God. That's right. And when we stand trial, they're gonna, the old devil's going to say, well, what about when he done this? What about when he done that? Where's the evidence? Right. God erased the evidence. He erased what we yes. done wrong. Right. He took away what yes. we're going wrong and what we're doing wrong. And I'll tell you what, if you got sin in your life, oh, Jesus will take it away and he'll go on to go on an old cross and die and give his heart and life for you. He's willing to take that sin Amen. that you committed and cast it away and say, I'll right. take it for you. Yep. I went up on an old cross. I was willing to die and hang up on an old cross right. for you tonight. Today, I'll tell you what, we had a man... He was willing to take our deal for our sins and willing to die for us. I tell you what, tonight we need to thank God that he was <coughs> willing to send his son down here to cover up for what this and what Gary Holiday had done. And I tell you what, if I'm not careful, Gary Holiday's mouth will run away from him and get him in trouble. Things Gary does that will get him in trouble if he's not careful. But thank God I have a Savior that is willing to stand there and forgive me and say, hey, you messed up here. He may beat me up a little bit, 
made me lose a little sleep over something I may have said that I didn't mean to say or might hurt someone's feelings. But God will sit there and convict me of it. But the neat thing about it is God will say, Gary, I forgive you. Amen. I forgive you where you fell short. I tell you what, you can't look at what Gary does because Gary's just a man. Right. Gary's yeah. a sinful man if he's That's not right. careful. But the thing Gary's got, he's got a Savior that was willing to die yes. and Amen. give his life for me and say, Gary, Amen. I forgive you. That's right. I forgive you for what you've done. I forgive you for the sins you've done. I, give, I forgive you for your shortcomings. I tell you what, we can't worry about all the little shortcomings. And, is this going to, what's this going to do to me? Is God and this going to be that? Because I tell you what, tonight we fell under the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. I tell you what, the grace of Jesus come down upon us tonight. And if you don't have the grace of Jesus over your life tonight, you're going to die and go to a devil's hell. Right. I tell you what, tonight you need to come down to an old altar and say, God, <coughs> I'm tired. Amen. I'm tired of the sin in my life. I'm tired of what's going on in my life. I want something better. I want a better relationship with you. Lord, take this sin that I'm holding with me tonight and take it away from me. <coughs> oh, Simon Peter was, he had a job for Simon Peter to go do. He said, well, I've got stuff for you to go do. I don't need you to get crucified here. I'm going to take the punishment for you. And I'm going to take that sin away. But by him being willing to heal that man right there, and how that they could still take him up after seeing that Jesus had put the man's ear back upon his head. You stop and think about it. How amazing that would be to see Jesus put somebody's ear up and put it back on their head. It's a lot better than what they did down there at that church growing toes. I can't give you that. <laughs> I tell you what, I bet, I bet you that man wasn't afraid to show people where his ear got put back on. Because you know that man was changed. Because when Jesus comes in and he touches you and he heals you, things he changes you. Right. It doesn't really say whatever happened to that man. But I often wonder if that man wouldn't change the rest of his life mm. when Amen. Jesus went up and died on an old cross. But I tell you what, sometimes people have things like that happen and it'll end up being an emotional experience. That's right. yep. Sometimes if you're not careful, you'll think you're saved. That's right. Yep. Preach it. But it's just an emotional yeah, opinion. That's right. Preach it. I tell you what, sometimes you got to get serious in your life and say, God, Amen. I don't want an emotional experience. That's I right. want a relationship. Yeah. Amen. I want a relationship with you. Yeah. Right. I want you to take care of this sin. I want you to forgive me of this sin. I tell you what, you work on your relationship with Jesus Christ, and it will change the relationships in your life. Amen. It will change relationships with your family. You may have some hard, bitter relationships in your family right now. But I tell you what, there's a man that can heal and help you heal. Right. Yep. Amen. And it starts with you building a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, tonight we got to look out and say, God, I just want to be a child of you, of you for you. Amen. Lord, I want to have a relationship for you. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I mean, you can come to church every Sunday, Sunday night and Wednesday night. And never have a relationship with God. Amen. Preach it. I've seen a lot of people go to church for years. I've been to churches where people have been going for years end up getting saved. That's right. And they've been to church uh, half their life. Thought, hey, I got saved. Amen. It was just an emotional experience. That's right. right. I tell you what, tonight we need to get a relationship with God. Yes. And say, God, I want to be like old Simon Peter. I want you to come in there and take care of the sins of my life. And as Brother Shane preached this morning, he's got a job for each and every one of us to do. He had a job for Simon Peter to go do after he got crucified. But the funny thing was, even after Simon Peter had went through all this and got in the place of the year, Jesus told him and said, hey, you're, you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. Mm -hmm. How many of us today, when we start a relationship with God, we get out in public and we act like we don't know it. How many of us, I've done it. When I was a little kid and I got saved at 11 years old, the devil taught me how to tell my dad. The devil beat me out of the blessing. Right. But old Peter, he realized by morning how he had felt. He told Jesus, he said, I will not deny you. But he denied Jesus three times. How many of us today, if we're not careful, we'll get around a bunch of people at work, a bunch of people around us, and the next thing you know, 
We'll let things slide. <coughs> we'll stand there and listen to jokes we shouldn't listen to. Amen. Or we'll do things we normally wouldn't do. It's took me a long time to realize when that stuff starts going on, my head just turn around and walk Amen. off. Yep. You know, Gary used to be like Peter was that night. And sometimes he would stand there and listen to something he shouldn't listen to, and that was a denying cry. But now when that stuff starts going on, they start talking about going to skin clubs and getting drunk. Instead of Gary standing there listening to it, Gary just gets up and walks off and goes off down the bus. There's a reason for that, because I'm building a relationship with God. I tell you what, you better work on that relationship with God and say, God, thank you for saving my soul. Amen. Thank Amen. you for saving me. But as I look back at what this deal with Peter, I had never realized in all the times I'd read that, that what he had done was a capital offense. That he could have went down to us, they could have took him down with Jesus, and he could have had to pay the same price Jesus paid. <coughs> but the funny thing is, Jesus paid it all, and he That's took care right. of it. He took care of everything for Peter, that that way Peter could go on with his life. And God had a job for him to do, and each and every one of us here in the church tonight, God's got a job for you to do. Right. He's got something uh, something in your life He wants you to do. Amen. He wants you to help build a church in Morrisville, Missouri. That's right. okay. He wants you to be a worker in Morrisville, Missouri to build this church. He's got something for each and every one of us. Tonight, if you're not saved and you're in the house, it'd be time to come down and put you, put an application in with God and say, God, I need a job to do. I need something to do in the church. I need something. I want a relationship with you. If you don't have a relationship with God tonight, come down and start a relationship with Amen. God and say, God, I need a relationship with you. Amen. I need a job to do. I want something to do to further the kingdom of Christ here in the city of Morrisville. I want to build a church for you. Amen. Hey, what? Well, we got something special going on here. Right. Yep. You know, the more I look around here and every time I look around here, the more excited I get. Amen. Cannot wait to see what God's going to do Amen. in the house. Yep. God's forgiven a lot of us in here. We've seen a lot of people get saved lately. It's been a great thing. Amen. But I'm telling you tonight, if you got sin in your life, we need to get it out. Amen. Amen. And get on the right track and say, God, thank you for what I what you've done. Amen. Yes. Thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you for being with me and being a part of me. And I'll tell you what, tonight, let's Thank God for what he's done for us. Amen. Amen. I want to kind of cut it short tonight to give room for the kids. But tonight I want you to think about old Simon Peter when he cut, his, cut that ear off. And, he's, and he was facing a criminal deal. But God said, I'll pay the price. Amen. I will pay the price for you. If you've not had the price paid for you tonight, is the night. Get that price paid. Amen. Amen. Come down to no altar and say, God, I'm sorry for what Amen. I've done. I'm sorry, and I want to thank you for what you've done. <coughs> she was willing to take an old sinful man like Gary Holliday and put him behind the pulpit where everybody would think he was crazy. And God takes something that nobody else would want, nobody else could use. Me and Brother Tanner was talking this afternoon, me and him both. When I was going through high school, I didn't talk to nobody. I was a recluse. But it's funny, when God started using me, now my bosses make fun of me at work because if I go across the building, it takes me an hour to cut time I talk to everybody. <laughs> but God's given me a gift of gab to further the kingdom. Right. He took something that I was weak in, and now I, know I like to talk to everybody. Amen. I enjoy visiting people. I've learned to talk to people in Walmart checkout lines. It don't matter where I'm at, I'll talk to anybody. <laughs> well, my wife's got a very good tonight, <laughs> She can talk to anybody. But the thing is, when my wife talks to people, she tells them about God. Yeah, right. Amen. She learns to open the door. She, she don't care where we're at. She don't care if we're at a school function, Walmart. If we're at a quilting deal, she wants to tell them about Amen. her Savior. Amen. I think what we need more of is to get in that mindset. Yeah. That no matter right. where we're at, what right. we're doing, Amen. that we're willing Amen. to tell people and say, say that, look what this man done for me. Amen. God saved my soul. He took an old wretched, worthless individual 
And he made something special Amen. in his eyes. Sometimes in other people's eyes, I still look, eh. But I tell you what, all I care about is what I look to look like to God. Right. And I just want to further God and get out there and tell more people. I want to see more people get saved. Amen. I'll tell you what, we've had one of the best runs that I have seen in the last 20 years of going to church. Right. In the last month, I've seen more people saved than I have in several years of those times. I used to, we used to think if we seen one soul a year saved, it was a great deal. But I tell you what, we get keep seeing people, person after person, come in and get saved. Amen. We get to see a church start growing. And I tell you what they can say that the old book we teach out of is archaic and hard to understand. Amen. It's not hard to understand. Right. I can tell you right now, I see people come in and I see people start changing. I see people start growing. I see people start serving God and worshiping God. And I tell you what, tonight we have something special. Amen. And we can't let it go. we got to keep on going on. And thank God for what he's done for me. Right. Amen. I tell you what, we might as well just have a song of invitation. We'll turn it over. That way we can turn this over to the kids. But if you got something you're thankful for tonight, or you got somebody lost in your life, and you want to be a better representation to them, it don't hurt to come down to an old altar to God. <coughs> Help me be what I need to be. Amen. Help me be the man of God or the woman of God I need to be. <coughs> Help me pray for one another. Cheers. 